How are you doing, my dear gardening friends? Here I am in the middle of January, sitting in my garden, trying to catch a little bit of uh, sun and color, and not finding it, unfortunately, waiting impatiently for spring to come. But in this video, I'm going to talk about that beautiful wind, which can bring uh, relief into our summer evening gardens and we can enjoy our evening dinners with beautiful presence of nice wind caressing our cheeks. But in winter, the wind can be persistent and prevailing. So how are roses doing with the wind, especially a strong persistent wind of winter, that cold bitter wind? So in this video, we are going to talk about roses and wind. For roses in summer, wind, a gentle wind, steady gentle wind can be a welcome guest. The constant air of movement around the rose bush, especially uh, around roses which are susceptible to diseases, help roses fight those diseases. And uh, what the gentle wind does during the morning, those morning breezes, they help rose dry from the morning dew. This way, rose is not as susceptible to developing all sorts of uh, mildew and black spot. But that's a beautiful, gentle summer and spring wind. In winter, the wind can be quite cold and harsh, and we have, if we have those persistent long winds, they can be quite damaging to our roses and generally to our garden plants. The uh, degree of damage which can happen from the cold wind depends on uh, severity of dryness of the air, severity of drought in summer, and generally the condition of the plant. If plant is weakened by previous diseases, it will be very susceptible to wind damage in winter. Right now, the beginner gardeners are going to say, oh gosh, do I have to worry about wind in my garden too? There are so many things these people are telling me that I have to worry about my garden. And I will say no, if you live in a typical suburban environment where you have got neighboring houses near you and you're protected with uh, shrubberies and fences, prevailing strong winds shouldn't be a problem for your garden. But if you live in cold areas where you face a lot of open land and you want to plant roses, I would advise to you to know that roses do not really like wind and they are um, struggling with strong prevailing winds, especially cold winds in winter. It's a good idea to go on the internet and Google prevailing winds in your area. For example, here in Connecticut, I live in Southern Connecticut, we have, so here we have East and there we have uh, uh, West. So this area would be North and prevailing winds for us are from the North West in winter. And in summer, we have uh, winds coming from that area. Also, the difference between the backyard here for me and the front of the house is that backyard is very secluded, very protected. We have a lot of um, privacy hedges because I like my backyard to be a little hidden garden. But the front garden has a lot of wind following the street. And I noticed that there, my roses needs to be caught on a shorter schedule, on a shorter height, because winds might rock those roses and might damage those roses during winter. Severe damaging winds in spring, when your roses are not well anchored with new roots, when you just planted your bare root roses, you have to make sure that you protect them when from a strong uh, blows of wind because if there is nothing to anchor your rose in the ground the strong wind can even pull the whole uh, bush out of the ground with roots and totally damage the plant. In winter if you have your rose with too many big canes there would be enough of wind resistance in that rose and that rose would be rocking on the wind. The wind would be rocking not only the stems of the rose, but also the root system of the rose. And oh gosh, damage would be almost unrepairable to spring. Suddenly you will come into spring and your rose just died and you don't know what happened to it. 
So advice is walk around your garden in winter, as I told you in my pre one of my previous videos, and look at your plants in wind. I know it's no fun to walk around in wind, but it's a good thing to do, just to see what is uh, being damaged by strong wind. So in winter, when wind is strong, what we can do, we can't fight wind, we can't cancel wind, but we can reduce the damage which wind has on our roses. So the first thing, of course, climbers. Climbing roses have beautiful long canes. And if you would not tie those long canes for winter, gosh, unbelievable damage would be done to those beautiful climbers to the point of broken um, stems, stems which are dead from uh, winter damage. Uh, the plant can be really damaged by those punishing winds. And the rule number one for all climbing roses going into winter is, of course, tie them up to permanent um, strong structure where they're not going to be rocked in the wind. Now, what about our shrub roses? Shrub roses. The question very often people ask me, how uh, low do we cut shrub roses for winter? And there is no, not really a, a rule for that. You cut as low as uh, you want your roses to be, depending on the habit of your rose and situation in which your rose is growing. You want your bush taller, you, you don't uh, trim it so uh, way down. You want your um, rose a little bit lower, you trim it lower. But in well-exposed areas in your garden, if you have those areas, gardeners, what they do, they go in and they trim their bushes in the fall. When first several frosts uh, came into the area, they do the low trimming of the bushes because they don't want any damage, any rocking to happen to those roses. In my area, I like to do all my major haircuts for my roses at the beginning of spring. But, in the sense, I'm starting to branch out with my roses into the front. Till now, all my beauty roses were growing in the back, in a very sheltered back uh, yard location. And I planted several roses in the front of the house. And I noticed that they, one rose was really rocking several uh, weeks ago. So I had to trim my uh, Queen of Sweden all the way down till, I think, two feet down. And Queen of Sweden, since it's not getting morning sun in that location in front of my garden, it gets very lanky and long. And I suspect Queen of Sweden gets those long octopus canes to begin with. So that's something for you to consider. Also another thing, to secure that especially new rows in the land going into winter, it's a good idea, of course, to um, add um, compost or mulch or anything or soil around the root base of the rose to make sure that that root is secure and only the stems are swaying in the wind or not swaying at all and the root system is staying intact. You can ask that some trees and some plants can the root system cannot be covered with extra um, with extra soil. It's very important for trees not to suddenly add extra soil to their trunks and some, some um, companies who are taking care after the public properties love to do this beautiful, cute little mounds around the base of the trees. Oh gosh, no, 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 that's not a good idea. But roses are different. Roses are going to create extra roots into that soil which you pile up on the rose, uh, around the rose root. And roses are going to be even more anchored into the soil which you just added to that rose in winter. Another way to fight the wind would be to plant some sort of wind-breaking um, plants in your garden, especially uh, plant them around roses to make sure that the wind uh, doesn't hit the hard surface, a fence, and then it creates all sorts of turbulence. But the best windbreaker would be the plant which absorbs a little bit of the wind, lets some wind go through and block some of the wind. The best plants for uh, withstanding the wind would be used, and here is a list of other plants which are good as, um, as a wind breakers and good companions for roses. Uh, a very successful uh, planting situation where you pair roses with wi wind breaking um, shrubs would be a place where a shrub doesn't create a lot of shade for roses, and uh, the shrub is. Um, with small needle-like um, leaves. 
uh, shrubs of the, those types are very good for blocking wind. And uh, generally shrubs which are covered with the uh, branches and the leaves all the way to the ground. That there is no uh, way for the wind to to scoop underneath and create a little micro tunnel and still damage your roses. Yews, again, yews are great plants for that. Yews are excellent to trim. The only thing is yews look really dreary in winter. Uh, they become so cheerful and so wonderful in spring, but in winter they stand like really somber soldiers in our gardens. But I, I still appreciate yews for their excellence. Uh, drought tolerance and they take shearing so well. Here at the back of my garden I can keep my Lady of Charlotte nice and tall and uh, give her all the space she needs. But if this Lady of Charlotte would be growing in front of my garden where we have um, fairly strong winds going along the street. Oh gosh, this Lady of Shalot probably would, would uh, be half of its size. But here in the backyard where we have, as you can see, good protection from all sides. We have good uh, uh, hedges growing everywhere. The winds are really not noticeable here. And as a result, my roses are well sheltered here. Again, for the beginner gardeners, we don't need to worry about wind on you in your garden. There are a lot of other things to worry about, but I don't think you should worry about wind too much. But it's good to know. It's good to know that wind can damage our plants and we should just watch out about it. Hope this video was helpful. Please do subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time. Stay warm.